Did you ever see that movie, Night of the Living Dead? What's that? Well, I feel like I there really threw you, didn't I? <laughs> I, really, I really felt like there should wow. have been required viewing before we did this movie. Well, maybe you should have told me what the bit was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back once again to the One and a Half White Guys podcast, or more it's listed white guy opinions on movies for long. I'm Nathan, your half white guy. I'm Nick, your one zombie one zombie personally i'm really excited we're so happy to be talking about an essential <laughs> summer horror movie what do you think nick this Not is a, just essential summer horror essential zombie movie i would say an essential zombie and just horror movie in general spoilers we're big fans of this one big this is gonna fans. be a really good review yeah this is gonna be go <laughs> way this is either gonna be too long for you or you're like i love that movie and you're gonna learn a lot with us and i do also want to give a shout out to uh, my former housemate and fan of the podcast who listens, uh, Gabe. Gabe, you got me these little pinups that that were wearing that are right here when we lived together. You said, "Hey, you love Return of the Living Dead, right?" And I was like, "Oh, dude, absolutely!" And uh, I've had them for a while. I'm very happy to be using them here. So thank you, and uh, thank you for listening to us. Come on the podcast, by the way, sometime. Uh, Fourth of July is just passed, and this takes place, I think, July third. Yes, July third, the day before Independence Day. We brought a bunch of zombies up. How American. How American. Well, it's <laughs> this shit gets very American at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Louisville needs some freedom, boys. <laughs> no, well, sir. I don't think this has been pleasant for anybody. Yeah, I think this has been a complete mess for everyone involved. Before we get too much into it, uh, I do want to put out, we still have stickers available. Still very much stickers. We would love to send out these to some of you guys that watch or just into the podcast to put around, slap on things, maybe your laptop, maybe give them to some friends. Has our QR code for our link tree there. We're more than happy to get these to you guys. Just let us know your address. Uh, in message us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, whatever you want to do, and we will mail these out to you. No problem. We're very excited to... Uh, have these and a shout out to Raul for making these as well. Shout Thank out, you, Raul. Shout out again. Appreciate it. We may be hitting you up for some more if we get enough of these sold. Well, not sold, given away. <laughs> we are doing Return of the Living Dead from 1985, directed by Dan O'Bannon. Dan O'Bannon. Yes, that Dan O'Bannon, starring <laughs> Clue Gulager. I hope I'm saying that right. As Bert, James Karen as Frank. Our favorite voodoo priest as Spider, Miguel A. <laughs> Nunez Jr., and near and dear to our heart, Lanaya Quigley as Trash. <laughs> what an iconic oh, role. But honestly... As just as an as a emo punk icon in yes. this. <laughs> emo, just fucking punk. She, she's punk in this. The, like, it, like, there's, very few, there's very few movies beloved by the punk audience audiences this is one of them. Oh, what, you, you got to tell... What about Tom Matthews oh, as yeah. Freddy? The second best Tommy Jarvis, by the way. <laughs> and um, don't forget about Mark Venturini is my personal favorite in this movie. Oh, uh, Suicide. Yes. And that's his name. Sorry. That's his name. That's sorry his name. for the sorry for the, the, the unfortunate account of the word. But that's just his name in the movie. He also has it spray painted across his car. Punks, am I right? <laughs> he really he really embodies the whole punk uh, aesthetic <laughs> in here, too. He's my favorite. Dude, he, he's just he's such a stereotype and I love it. But the fucked up thing is I know punks like that. Yeah, he, he's just like a pissed off, angry dude the entire time. <laughs> There's just punks that are just mad in the scene constantly. I go, what are you even so what are you so angry for? Very excited to be talking about that one today. So excited. I may have a back patch for this, Nick. Let's see if I can turn around in this space. You take five whole minutes to yeah. turn around. Let me see. <laughs> oh, yeah, there we go. He's going gatekeep, y'all. You better watch this movie this before you come to him. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably in my top 10. Top 10 easily. This is one of my favorite movies. Oh, yeah. Name every movie in your top 10 ever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You want us to lead us in with the IMDb summary? When two bumbling employees at a medical supply warehouse accidentally release a deadly gas into the air, the vapors cause the dead to rise again as zombies. It's dead people screaming. <laughs> dead people screaming. <laughs> two side things. Yeah. Um, Mark Venturini, in the same year as this movie came out, was in... Friday the 13th, A New Beginning. Oh, really? He plays the really mad dude with an axe who just, <laughs> like, axes the fat kid Joey to death at, oh the, my fuck, God. at the fucking uh, rehab camp. Shit. <laughs> you know who's also in that is Miguel Nunez Jr. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. So this is the same year? 
Same year, Same in 1985. Year. No, and we could talk so much about Miguel Nunez Jr. Dude, he's such a, like, unsung hero of the horror genre. Oh, straight up. I would say he's probably, like, at least at this podcast, in probably our top 10 to 15 actors that we just yeah. think are so fucking good at what they do. He's the one that eats the enchiladas. <laughs> it's them damn enchiladas. It's the damn enchiladas. He's dude. our voodoo priest in the Scooby Doo movie. Scooby Doo one, yeah. If Can't you, you see, I was about to sacrifice this chicken. <laughs> you can watch, check that one out. We have it on our uh, channel. Please check out our review of Scooby Doo one with Cameron. But yes, he is the voodoo priest in Scooby Doo one. It's really funny how everyone just stays in the horror genre. Meanwhile, and I quickly is going on to like Night of the Demons and stuff. Like oh fuck that. yeah, Night of the Demons. <laughs> yeah, <She's in> that. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, she, tur- she turned into so many, uh, so many good roles. That's the one where they sing the, uh, they have Bauhaus in there, right? You did, you would know. Yeah, yeah, I don't remember. remember. <laughs> and the do- goth girls like possessed and dancing. Oh, that's the scene? Yeah, oh, that's the scene. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Stigmata Martyr by Bauhaus. In the true spirit of punk, we are sipping on some absolute trash beer right now in these mugs, believe. And uh, in the spirit of an Independence Day movie, it might be the king of beers. Have a beer with fear. Uh, <laughs> Glasses quote, break. <laughs> quote leaving from fear on that. Okay, in terms of past experiences with the movie, you showed this to me, you punk. <laughs> this is one of the ones I watched, and I, ha- I I was actually like blown away that Nick had not seen this no, movie because never. because you know at the end of the day, Nick loves horror. I just assumed this was one. I was like, this is right up your alley. I, I figured you had already seen this. Here's we the li- problem: we with- lived together, and we I just assumed you had watched it. No, the issue is this is kind. Of, this is an underrated one. Not a lot of people really give this one as much credit as they would maybe yes. the thing or the Exorcist. Sure, you know? like sure maybe they don't maybe it's not on the same pedestal as those because it is a different kind of horror movie yes it's a horror comedy it's a black comedy absolutely at the and, end of the day but and to be honest it, it kind of gets forgotten about when you consider night of the living dead and also dawn of the dead this isn't th- there's a also, Rome, this isn't a romero movie but it's yeah. very much a love letter to his yeah and well there's actually some history about all of that and we'll, no we'll get into it a little bit later about why it, it has to do with the writers and stuff and i'll give you a little bit later you want to hear the story of how I found this movie? This movie's a lot of fun. Okay, yeah. let's take a little bit trip back in time to the year of 2010, 2009, 2011. I, I can't remember which one it is. Alice, at the, Alice in Wonderland was killing it yeah. at the box office. There was a very popular video game that had come out, and it was called Call of Duty Black Ops 1. Do you remember this game? Never heard of it. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Now, if you know back then, Call of Duty, especially the Treyarch ones, used to include zombie mode on all of their games where you could kill Nazi zombies. And that was a lot of fun, especially if you loved horror like I did. It was a great little mini game, essentially, you could play and actually turn it into something bigger and bigger. There was a stint of time where the Call of Duty games were most hyped just because people were excited for the zombies uh, they DLC. They put effort into these zombie maps. But Black Ops 1 had a DLC called Call of the Dead. Now, Call of the Dead was a proper horror movie reference to George Romero because not only did they have a bunch of actors from horror movies, George Romero George himself, himself is, in was it, there. is in it and he chases you with a light and that's a whole thing. He's like an undead zombie with a light. It's crazy. Chases you with a studio light. Yeah, he <laughs> smashes you with a studio light, which <laughs> it, it, anybody that's worked on a film set has probably had that nightmare of some director chasing them with a studio light. They had a bunch of actors from different horror movies in there. Nick, I'm going to go ahead and list them and see if you, you might remember and see what they would be in there for. First of up is Danny Trejo. Danny Trejo. He's in for because, uh, what, what movie was he in? What was Machete? Machete. He's also in a couple other things. Uh, Robert England. Oh, who's that? <laughs> That's Freddy Krueger. <laughs> And the Phantom. And the Phantom. Yeah, in my favorite Phantom. Yeah, your favorite Phantom. <laughs> uh, Michael Rooker. Hell yeah. Uh, because, it's Merle. <laughs> yeah, it's, because uh, if you remember, Walking Dead had just started to come out. That's so it was right. big. It was big. And finally, Sarah Michelle Geller. <laughs> she could play as Sarah Michelle Geller. There's an intro for it. It was so much fun. You got to watch them like do their thing. Robert England's like stabbing people with a pitchfork. Sarah Michelle Geller's just like kicking zombies in the chest, <laughs> like full out there. I wish if you had played as her, you could use like a faster melee or something. Because like that's her special or something. Now who's the damsel in distress? Yes. Now who's the damsel in distress? 
But as you play, go through the opening sequence where they're like, oh, my God, these are real zombies. And George Romero gets carried off. Uh, they're like, let's go. And then all of a sudden, it's party time starts playing as they're all stabbing the zombies and like shooting them and stuff. <laughs> That's a really sick song. Where is that from? And I Google it and I go through and anyone that loves this movie is going to be like, I can't believe this is how you found out. I'm younger. OK, I had to fucking find out on my own. I still got there. We're babies. dude. I had to get there on my own. I still got there. <laughs> but regardless, I go, what's it that from? And sure enough, I punch in and I see this, this logo on YouTube playing it. And I go, what? What's that movie? And two days later, I had it downloaded off a torrent. And I was watching it at like high school and I was blown away by this movie. I was like, this is so much fun. And I was already still starting to listen to punk music at the time. And I go, this like helped cement my love for punk in general and the alt like punk style. I have an idea. I love I'll make this my personality. Damn right. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think this is all about? You think this is a fucking costume? This is a way of life. <laughs> it was such a good introduction it's to this movie. Time. Such a good introduction to this movie. And that was my first time watching it in high school. And from then on, I, I've watched it at least once to twice a year. It's so much fun. It has such an important role in horror movie and zombie movie uh, history. I tip my hat to them, including that reference. That's that's very much a love letter to yeah. that movie. Oh, it was so good. Call of Duty also had some other stuff that was really fun. Do you remember the Mob of the Dead map set in like 1950s era mobsters in yeah. a prison? And it's Joey Pants, oh. uh, <laughs> Chaz, Chaz Pullman Terry, <gasps> no. Ray, Li Ray Liotta, R. and, and uh, what's the other guy? The dude that cut off the ear in Reservoir Dogs. Oh, Michael Madsen? Michael Madsen. <laughs> yeah, those are the four you could play as. They have their own like characters and stuff like Hell that. Yeah. Chaz Pullman Terry, I think, plays the boss. Is like, <laughs> that's the boss. And it's like, I think Joey Pants is like the weasel or something like that. And they all have like different roles and stuff. They had such cool stuff back then. <laughs> I was like, these are such forward thinking. Treyarch's just like spending money to get these actors in. That's awesome. I've seen this a few times. We even saw this in theaters like last year. Yeah, they put it on 70 millimeter at the Alamo. That was a lot of fun. That was great. I've seen this now in theaters twice, both at the Alamo. <laughs> to this movie. To this movie. Great, great movie. And, and a fantastic underrated 4th of July movie too. I mean, even if you don't get to watch it around the 4th of July time, it's one of the best summer horror films. Absolutely. And I do have to give some shout outs to one particular fan. I went and looked this up just to confirm it, and it is true. This movie did not exist on DVD. It did not get made until probably 2008. I was looking at 2009 when it came on DVD. Hmm. It was on VHS and there was original film reels. And it was one fan that made a whole campaign to get this thing onto DVD for wider distribution. Nice. And uh, I think the people that have it now, Shout Factory is the one that does that. Okay. Shout Factory, you know, picks up picks up a lot of movies like this. They got they 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 know our love for horror very yeah, yeah. well. Yes, that, they, do. they do like punk like Rock and Roll High School is Shout Factory TV, like all these other ones. Right on. But uh, the guy's name is Michael Allred who yeah. created this whole website and like pushed. And finally, Dan O'Bannon actually reached out to him and was like, I'm not sure how do we do this? And they apparently coordinated together to get the movie put on DVD from a, a couple studios. Hell yeah. So thank you. You are the reason I found this movie. Uh, I do appreciate your campaign. Here's you know, to you. I guess one person can make a difference. Enough said. <laughs> Excelsior. Excelsior. Before we get really into the movie and the themes and certain scenes we want to talk about, I do want to give you kind of a background, Nick. I didn't know if you know all this story about why this seems connected to Night of the Living Dead or, you know, some of these other movies. OK, there's a thing about this movie that I that I felt a little confused watching it. Yeah. Frank tells Freddy, hey, have you seen Night of the Living Dead? Well, that was based off these events that yeah. pertain to what's in our basement right yeah. now. <laughs> So Return of the Living Dead kind of follows the original Night of the Living Dead, which was which is a George Romero movie that was also co-written by John Russo mm. with him. And then after that, John Russo wrote Return of the Living Dead, except that he and Romero didn't see eye to eye on certain things. Mm. And they kind of split off and decided to do their own thing. And the, the rule was 
John Russo could retain any rights to anything titled Living Dead. So Living Dead was his, which is now why you think about George Romero. George Romero did Dawn of the Dead. Land of the Dead. Land of the Dead. Day of the Dead. All these other ones. Not Living Dead anymore. Oh, that's so interesting. So George Romero took this stuff and was like, oh, I'm going to make Dawn of the Dead, which is a serious, it has some funny moments, but it's a serious, you know, movie. Mm -hmm. Serious movie. So is Land of the Dead. Russo runs off and tries to find a right, well, a co-writers and directors to help produce Return of the Living Dead. And originally was trying to get Toby Hooper to do it. Ah, that would have been something. <laughs> Toby Hooper helped write some of it, too. Oh, shit. He's like helped like touch up some of the lines and stuff like that. Some of the lines still represent like his ideas and stuff. But instead, they landed Dan O'Bannon. And Dan O'Bannon was, I think, 35 to 37 at the time. And I was reading an article at one point that said that he was so fucking excited to do I, like, I think this is a directorial debut. Yeah, if I'm honest. So he was like, I have lived so long and been unfulfilled. And now I have my chance. And this was the movie. <laughs> if you don't know who Dan O'Bannon is, he wrote Alien. He wrote Alien. That's what he was most famous for. Before, He's also connected to John Carpenter in the fog and. And um, he was in John Carpenter's student film, Dark yep. Star. Yeah. Yeah. So every, they're all they're all interconnected somehow. Everyone's awesome. Everyone hangs out with everyone. But <laughs> that's the story. And so it, much different direction than George Romero. And he just wanted to go full camp with it. And boy, does it bleed through every aspect of this script. Hell yeah. On one of the posters and in one of the trailers, there's a line that said, first, they want to meet you. Then they want to eat you. And uh, do you know who actually wrote that? Matt Groening <laughs> <laughs> from The Simpsons apparently is credited as writing a couple lines for like random shit. They, he wrote another line apparently that didn't get used like they're hungry and they're not vegetarians, <laughs> which is honestly we need movie posters like that. We need trailers <laughs> like that again. We need like shit that's tacky and we need funny. some so we need something tongue-in-cheek tongue-in-cheek right yeah. about it like just just dumb fucking shit in the trailers like imagine seeing that and just having the audience laugh their ass off at it. i mean i would love it <laughs> that there's that this is <laughs> this is about it kind of follows an ensemble cast because we're introduced to freddie played by tom matthews he is just i don't know if he's punk Really? He's just no, kind he's of, just like a normal guy that's like a new employee. He's a normal, warehouse. like, because what are they, like, all early 20s kids or early something? Early 20s, late teens, early 20s, yeah. He's got a new job at this medical supply warehouse, and his, uh, su his, his supervisor's shown in the ropes, supervisor played by Frank, uh, named Frank, played by uh, James Karen. James Karen, who and, would go on to be in Mulholland Drive in that director role. Have you seen Mulholland Drive, right, David Lynch's? Oh, he, as soon as I saw him in Mulholland Drive, he's been in a few other, he's been in other things too, but I saw him in Mulholland Drive. I was like, it's Frank. <laughs> Clue Gulager's in this and he's the owner of the medical supply unit. It's his business. He plays Bert, 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 Bert and uh, Clue Gulager, who the very same year this came out, he was Jesse's dad in Nightmare 2. Yeah, yeah. Revenge. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it must've been a gas leak. Bert just explodes. <laughs> it's just like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> So easy opening of the movie is that Freddy's just at his new job, getting shown how to do everything. You he's know? training. He's, yeah, he's training. he's training. It's a medical supply warehouse. So mm -hmm. they have they have like full on skeletons and cadavers here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, on the back of his jacket, how it says, fuck you on there. Yeah. Yeah. So apparently, obviously, they couldn't have that on TV. So they made another production and reshot everything for the oh, TV. Shit. And it says TV version on the back of his jacket. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta find the image for that, but I was like, I've never oh seen it on God. TV. That's fucking great. It says television version, and see it seeing the TV version of the movie. I gotta look for that clip. That is it. that is just straight up up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good on it's them. So man. good. <laughs> this whole movie could have been avoided if Freddy had not asked Frank. What's the weirdest thing you've ever seen here? And you know what? You know what the craziest thing is? Frank could have avoided it and just said, well, let's not go down there. Frank could have told him and then could have said, OK, moving on for the well, rest of your training. Well, he's the one that slapped the drum. <laughs> so, but we'll, Made by the U.S. Army themselves. <laughs> Freddie asked God Frank, what is the strangest thing you've ever seen? Did you see that movie, Night of the Living Dead? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one where the corpses start eating the people, right? Sure. What, what about it? Nothing. Night of the Living Dead was based on a real, uh, a, a chemical that 
they were what were they developing it for like marijuana <laughs> Man, spray on weed plants get rid of them it's 245 trioxin yeah by the darrow chemical company which is a riff on the dow chemical company right dow and darrow yeah dow developed agent orange oh yes. no so it's a riff on agent orange and i'm trying to remember everything with it that i read a whole thing where it was like some of the stuff that they say is in the 245 trioxide is also trioxin is also in agent orange they it's the dow chemical company that d-o-w that did the agent orange but they're doing an obvious rip because riff on it because if you say darrow really fast it sounds like dow darrow darrow yeah that's yeah, exactly <laughs> so they're riffing on it anyway it's this fake gas chemical called 245 trioxide and it hits dead bodies and immediately reanimates them yes immediately reanimates them now the question is are they kind of back or are these completely new things and no one seems to really know and they don't really answer it frank tells freddie this story about how they tested it but it was like making all the bodies in like this uh veterans hospital it's like in a veterans hospital just like come back to life <laughs> and they had to cover it up like crazy yeah and, and contain the bodies in these giant metal drums drums yeah these they're locked these, these in there. barrels yeah these barrels and what does Frank say? He says, like, there was a typical army fuck up where they were supposed to send these barrels to the Darrow Chemical Company. They yeah. got sent to the men. They got sent to their place. They're down in the basement. Do you want to go see them? And he shows Freddy in the basement. And there, lo and behold, there's a decomposed, like, preserved, like, I don't know, like, this Vladimir thing. Putin's body in there. <laughs> this um, thing. Yeah, it's all fucking decomposed, locked in, sealed in. He uses an entire roll of paper towels to wipe it. What a dick. Clean. He sprays it with Windex and wipes it with the side of the paper towel. Yeah, Freddie then goes, hey, you sure this thing's safe? And uh, Frank says, hey, this was made by the military themselves. And he taps it. U.S. Army Corps <laughs> of Engineers. Boom. And immediately it starts spraying out covers them and we get led in with probably the most banging oh, theme of the all theme is time great. which is the theme is also called 245 trioxin And we get a beautiful scene of the body hitting air and it cut all the stuff around it melting a little bit as it comes to life, which is done. Turns which is, into this thing, which is done with, uh, you know, a wax thing in there filmed over time as it got. Yeah, it hot. looks like it looks like the dude at the end of Raiders. Yeah. And I was reading <laughs> I was reading as well in this scene where the body kind of melts and it, you know, does all its stuff with the wax. The glass wasn't supposed to crack, but it got so hot. The glass just shattered and blew out at the screen. They were it's like, cool effect. Keep filming. Keep filming. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. Just, just, just roll. keep ro rolling. And oh, Freddie and Frank get knocked out though by this gas yeah. though it go it sprays right on them and they 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 describe it later as just like I've never smelled something more rancid and awful and disgusting in my life yeah and this but this 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 gas leaks into the rest of the medical supply <laughs> unit where there are corpses <laughs> corpses and half split dogs and a cadaver. <laughs> So you can guess what might happen. We also at this point after the title sequence get to meet uh, Freddy's friends who are walking around looking for a place to party. They just want to hang out and party. Yeah. We get what so did Cameron say? There's like there's his group of friends so random. It's like half punk, half prep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is like the 80s. Everyone's linked up. It's a it's a nice smorgasbord of and there yeah, of the, it's a group consisting of it's it's suicide spider trash suicide isn't in there yet no he's not and they're, but they're there's also down the street yeah there's chuck casey and tina that's it the actress, ball buster <laughs> actress for casey who is a great standout uh, actress in her own right is not actually an actress she was a stripper at a club that dan o'bannon used to go to all right and i guess that she he offered her the role of trash first and she was like no i'm already a stripper i don't want to do that i want to be a party girl i like to party so she he was like i right, got what? this i got this other character yeah, like, well, you, you want to be casey and she was like yeah i just want to party i want to party <laughs> i just want to party She's good too. Everybody's everybody's wonderfully three dimensional. Yeah, in this, yeah, yeah. I guess but. she fucked up on that line. They had to take like almost a hundred takes of her saying "go choke a chicken" because she couldn't say it. <laughs> she couldn't get it. It's like I was like "go chick a chick," and it's like they were like, "God damn it!" Just keep rolling, man. 
fucking Chuck's just sitting there trying to like the guy that plays Chuck is just sitting there trying to like hold it in, I guess. I was reading reports that she just like, I can't fucking say it. Go choke a chicken. Every, Every character is identifiable too, yeah. like and and memorable enough to follow. Even the colonel, who's yeah. not even in the movie that much, he's he's very he's even he's very funny. He's the one funny. searching for the uh, the uh, the drums. Yes. He's looking for him. Yeah, and he he only is in like two scenes, but he's fun. Funny. But even he's, he's really, really fun. <laughs> I think some of the best lines besides trash also have to go to Spider. I think Spider yeah. <laughs> with Miguel Nunez. I was reading he was actually homeless when he was cast in this. No way. Yeah, he was struggling and he got cast and kind of changed because like he went out, you know, he said he got cast in horror. He did other stuff. From then on, he was horror. So I was like, good on well, him, Well, good to this movie for giving him a career, man. Miguel Nunez. But he also, man. he's also got that line where they, they find, they find something in the basement of the medic, of the medical supply yeah. warehouse. And they, he's got that great line where they run back up the stairs, they shut the door. He's up against the door and the others run away and he turns and says, where the fuck you go and help me ban the door? <laughs> stupid fuckers. Stupid fuckers. I got to touch on Lanaya quickly too. Oh, is as trash. Trash is part of this group and she's just this punk icon in the movie. She eventually she becomes as scared as the other characters. But, but before, before, that, before shit pops off, she has some of the best lines. She's the funniest character in the movie. It's it's they roll up to fr like they roll up to the medical supply warehouse. And what does Spider say? What a hideous, ugly place. And then Lanaya quickly is like, I like it. It's a statement. <laughs> How the fuck do you not laugh at that? It's so <laughs> funny. It's she great. just has such a good character she plays. She's got this bright red hair. She's like got what what she's got streaks like painted on yeah, her face yeah. too. It's good. Does everything. Fucking roast she's got a very, everyone. She's got a moment in this movie that if you ever saw this as a kid or if your kids ever see this, it will determine if they are either hetero or homo. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just say that. But you got to meet her. I, I did. I did get to meet Lanaya Quigley. I got to meet her at a horror convention in Sacramento. She was there. I was very excited. Um, Crystal actually was with me and paid some of the money so I could meet her. Hey! I, was like, I was like, okay, fine. But I always got to go up. I think I was even wearing this and I was like, I, you know, I have your patch and like, she's on the back of this. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I was like, I was like, I just want to let you know that like the movie you're in and your character was like heavily inspirational to me as a, as a person growing up. I saw this when I was like in 10th grade and I loved it. And she was like, oh, yeah. thank you so much. I have an autograph photo from her. It's very nice. nice. She's very sweet. She's very cool. I was like talking to her about that. I talked to her a little bit about Night of the Demons and some other stuff. Oh, hell yeah. And she's, you know, it's, it's just awesome that, you know, the characters are still around or the, the actors and you get to kind of meet them, especially. The know. convention circuit's very near and dear to a lot of people, a lot of mm -hmm. horror fans because you get to meet your heroes, really. And yeah. so and so many of them are just so cool in they real are. life. Yeah, they are really, really cool. I've gotten to meet a few myself. Freddie and Frank come around. They just got up after the gas hit Being them sprayed and they're like the body's gone must have dissolved when it hit the air maybe regardless they decide to go up and like that's an awful stench and this is another point i want to talk about they use lysol to spray themselves down and get rid of the smell they had to ask lysol for permission yeah and they showed them the the concept of the movie and what they were going to be doing and lysol was like we like the idea that our product will kill undead spray so they gave the permission to use it Lysol said, yes, you can, because they love the idea that it killed the smell, <laughs> which is which is so good. You don't get companies doing shit like that anymore. They were just like, yeah, why not? That sounds good. Give us money. Give us if money. If we're going to be in this. Yeah, sponsor, sponsor the uh, thing. So that's an official Lysol spray he uses. It's so funny. These two are clearly like they have not recovered yet. They're yeah. just like, what the hell just happened? I feel yeah. terrible. Like, yeah, th this is bad. Like, and then. Things just start getting worse. <laughs> Things start getting worse. They discover one of the dogs is alive. That one of the half, half split, split dogs. dogs is alive. Meanwhile, they're screaming from inside the cooler. The cadaver that has is, come to life that they're going. People are going to dissect has come to life and is screaming to get out. This movie essentially asks you to buy in at this point. This is crazy. Are you going to love and just enjoy this? Because their reactions to realizing this thing is alive. Is deadly serious. I think the reactions and acting is just so genuine throughout. Like, like everything people react to in this, like whether it's wacky or weird or genuinely terrifying, it's all very 
it's all very visceral. I, him, you know what I, I mean? I can kind of see that. I have to disagree a little bit. Okay. I think that I think that some of it, it's clear Dan O'Bannon got the performance he wanted out of everyone because everyone is acting 100% in this. Oh, yeah. No one's like dropped off. No one's asleep. Everyone is. And yeah, I, I mean, truly, honestly, I, I would agree with you somewhat. Like some of the stuff I'd be freaking out the same way, too. But everyone is just going 100% in this movie. Yeah. And that's why we really, really enjoy it. Like when they're the, the, the cadaver just like pounding on the cooler, trying to get out. And they're like, and Freddy's, Oh, Jesus Freddy, Christ. Freddy, 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 what's happening? It's the cadaver, the cadaver. Well, what's it doing in there? I don't know. It's so sad. Well, what are we going to do? Lock it in. Yeah, yeah. When I say hamming it up, <laughs> they're just having fun. They get to go 100% with these lines. That's where it's, I'm a little iffy where I have to say, like, it's serious acting because you can still tell everybody's having a blast, even the people that are scared, even yeah. the people that are stressed, because this is a stressful movie, maybe if it's your first time watching it, because it's a movie that has near perfectly shown a bad situation getting comically worse I, I think things are getting out of and, worse, <laughs> and worse <laughs> and worse and worse it, this movie and, progressively and gets worse is, it's it, amazing it, in the funniest in the funniest most like horrific ways possible like this you can't believe what you're seeing sometimes it's just like i can't believe these idiots just have made things worse for themselves now it's hilarious as they decide <laughs> to call bert the group has joined with this other guy suicide and he is driving them to go meet because he has a car to meet to meet Freddie at, at his job. I love suicide. They, he's just he's just angry punk. Yes. That's what he is. He's just big, tall, angry punk. You know, they get there too early and they got to wait till Freddie's off. So they I ain't sitting here two fucking hours. So they decide to go party in the cemetery that's conveniently right yep. next to the uh, medical supply warehouse and also the mortuary that's yes, right by. This I is love a, this that is a too. Great, this is a greatly convenienced uh, mortuary and medical supply next to the cemetery. But this whole cul-de-sac is a reference to death. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the mortuary is a mortuary. There's a cemetery right next to it. It's a medical supply warehouse Cemeteries full of in cadavers. Cemetery in between the, the two. The it's mortuary so is called Resurrection. Resurrection. How Mortuary. fucking brilliant is yeah. that <laughs> so so perfect i love this movie and uh i think we can leave the general plot here you can you can kind of watch it but i did want to talk about specific moments Please, or scenes that means. do that touch on the zombies in this like spoilers there's zombies there's a lot of them that show up <laughs> but, oh yeah we should touch on the zombies but they um this is the first if i'm not mistaken this is the first movie that implemented the idea that zombies want to eat brains first movie about zombies wanting Brains. brains they all want brains that's all they cheer they cheer for and cry out for brains every time you see one of them do dying or eating they're like eating a dude's head yeah it's, it's just really cool effects the yeah. gore in this is phenomenal it's amazing <laughs> i but love it first one and this would help cement that trope going forward that zombies want brains yes this that's would be where the movie the, that would yeah do it. that's where the uh the cliche came from right mm -hmm. It's even cooler when the zombies show that they can really run and are very intelligent. It's even cooler when they start talking too. They can talk. Yeah. They can use tools. <laughs> they, can, they can do pretty much anything you can, which makes it even scarier. And above all, they keep on going. I One body part stops moving. The others just keep, move even keep faster. Going. The soundtrack for this movie is fucking incredible. Yeah. Like an incredible soundtrack. It is scored by punks and new wave and all kinds of groups that do, do this the damned did some of the music here that ultimately was removed but the oh. damned is like a massive punk group that did this tsol is in this uh the cramps have a song in this uh the cramps are popular because of wednesday so if you're watching this and be like i know a couple cramps songs check out the smell of female it's a great album 45 grave did what's considered the the main song which is the do you want to party and yep. uh, I, I got to see 45 grave at a show not too long ago and they still do this the song but they did a second version for this movie that wasn't actually in the movie it's called the zombie version and it's very slimmed down and the lyrics change about like young people drinking and driving not knowing they're gonna die like basically having fun you're mortal you're mortal 
and the mortal danger you may be in. So that's a that's a perfect one. And there's this perfect scene where it all kicks off where I'm I'm gonna spoil it, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. The 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 skeleton just pops out of the ground, <laughs> looks at them, opens its mouth, and party time starts blasting. <laughs> It's such a good, fun horror movie. Everyone I've ever showed this to has loved it. Yes. No one has ever said this isn't a good movie. This is, like, this well, is a maybe, phenomenally well, done maybe movie. Maybe Vanessa. Well, <laughs> her loss. Her <laughs> loss. <laughs> we are going to move on to the facts section now. The facts section is real facts about the movie that I researched and written down. Nick's never seen these before, and he's going to read them live for you. And we only have one fact and a what a story mark today. because Really? Because you know, all, all these other facts are in there. No. They're fun. Why, thank you. Yes, of course. Fact number one. Return of the Living Dead was released on August 16th, 1985. They fucked that up, didn't they? July 3rd, August 16th? Yeah. Come on. I'm kidding. Fact number one. Return of the Living Dead was released on August 16th, 1985 to a $4.4 million opening weekend. It earned a total of $14.2 million while in theaters, placing it at number 3,475 on the all-time inflation-adjusted domestic box office list. Some of its competition in the summer slash fall of 1985 included Pee-wee's Big Adventure, starring the dad of a guy I went to school with. Oh, no shit. Mm -hmm. And Back to the Future, starring the biggest villain of all time, Thomas F. Wilson. Well, as Biff Tannen. As Biff Tannen. <laughs> now, Thomas F. Wilson is a very nice guy. Biff Tannen's a fucking just... Uh, Biff Tannen's the devil, man. Yeah, dude. Like, I don't know what it is, but petition to make Biff Tannen the actual worst villain in any of all movies. Fuck everything. The Emperor, the zombies, <laughs> Michael Myers, it doesn't matter. They pale in comparison to Biff Tannen, a guy who ruins lives for no reason than to ruin lives. He doesn't even get anything out of it. He just is an asshole. This car smashed into me and I spilled my beer all over the place. I was drinking and driving because I could do this back then. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I went to school with the guy, son of the guy who played Pee Wee's rival in that movie. Oh, with... Um, His name's Mark Holton, the he's uh, in, actor. He's in, he's in Leprechaun and, also. Yeah, and also in uh, Gacy, one of the Gacy oh. movies. He's John Gacy in one of the movies. He definitely built like him. I went to school with his son, well, both of his sons, but uh, his one son was older than me, and there was one son that was like one year younger than me. So that's JD. I don't know if, I don't think he watches this one. <laughs> <laughs> watches this. But uh, I remember, yeah, I just remember, I was like, is that the guy from Pee Wee's Big Adventure? And everyone's like, yes. <laughs> that's pretty cool, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, my, my, my fifth grade teacher's husband went to school with Eminem, apparently. Oh. Yeah. Thanks, Mr. Van Voris. <laughs> what, what, it's a, but where was the teacher just not? No, she was there. Oh, okay. She was around. <laughs> she was like, she's she was like, like, my husband is cool. I'm going to, he's, he's here. I don't know. He's going to talk to you. So she's hung over is what I'm hearing <laughs> on that day. <laughs> oh, don't talk smack about Mrs. Yeah. V. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right. Not a lot of international numbers. I couldn't find much either here. But Nick, uh, top movies, 1985. 85? Yep. Back to the Future. Da, 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 da. That might be one of our favorite movies. Uh, it, while we're filming this, it is Pride Month, and uh, I know uh, LGBTQ loves Nightmare 2, Freddy's Revenge. Oh, yeah. That came out this year. <laughs> that Friday, Nightmare 2, Freddy's Revenge came out. 85, 85, 85. Uh, I'll give you top three. Let's do top three. Rambo 2 came out 85. That is number three. There you go. Rocky 4 came out 85. That is number four. Beverly Hills Cop? Beverly Hills Cop is 85. 84. Is it the end of 84? Yeah, it's December 5th. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> Beverly Hills Cops at the end of 84, 85. Police Academy, two. Oh, two? Yep. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. And The Goonies. Oh, yeah! Yeah, yeah Goonies are also in there. What is the, what's the top three, then? Top three are Back to the Future, nice. Beverly Hills Cop, and Rainbow First Blood Part 2. What a long title. I know. <laughs> The return of the Rambo of the First Blood Part Two. <laughs> the return of the revenge of the resurrection of the H two O. Rise, of the... rise of the planet of the apes. <laughs> Too many prepositional Kingdom. phrases. Get it together. <laughs> and this is it. We're on to the what a story mark. This is the most interesting fact I could find about the movie. Nick's never read it. He's going to read it for you live here in the vein of our hero Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> what a story mark. I once knew a girl. She had a dozen guys, okay. so they all ate her brains in the cemetery. Oh. <laughs> 
Did you, Did you ever fantasize, fantasize about, about being, being killed? killed? And then that scene happens. Get some Ooh, light over trash here. Trash is taking off clothes again. <laughs> <laughs> what a story, Mark. We got we went off on some, tangents. some tangents. What a story, Mark. Dan O'Bannon recalls working on Alien and having artist H.R. Geiger request fresh skulls to aid his designs. Quote, they were the most beautiful skulls I had ever seen, like works of art, and the teeth were all perfect. I was told the ones were ordered from India. Toby Hooper suggested the Skeleton Farm line, and a few months after the film opened, O'Bannon read a report that the government of India had stopped all deportations of skeletons for medical purposes. H.R. Geiger created two sets of monsters that freak. <laughs> I will find this freak. <laughs> so it's so crazy that it's just like a simple thing like H.R. Geiger being like, well, I got to create the xenomorph like 100 percent. And he's like, I need real human skulls. And I guess they got them from like a medical supply thing in India. And they were perfect teeth. Everything looked good. And he's like, how can this be possible? So H.R. Geiger created xenomorph, but unconsciously now created these zombies, these, <laughs> these things, because apparently Toby Hooper, when he was working on it, is like, oh, we should throw the line in, but like have it be a skeleton farm. Because one of the things that they say in the medical supply warehouse is like, oh, yeah, international treaty, kid. All skeleton farms come. All skeletons come from India. Why? Like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like I can't tell um, if that's true or not, or it used to be true. And, you know, uh, let us know, please. Uh, feel free to reach out to us. I was just, I was like, there's a lot. I was researching. I was like, I'm not going to deep dive into this right now. <laughs> it is weird with like horror, how many people that aren't actually directly related, whether it might be horror or something else, everyone seems to collab on these. Movies like this horror allow for people to just do weird shit. And you got to love that. <laughs> you got to love that. And just somebody's like, well, yeah, I'm kind of down to do this weird zombie movie. Get in their brains. <laughs> that sounds pretty cool. Toby Hoover had had the one Texas Chainsaw. Did he do two yet? He had two came out a year after this, but he had, you know, he had already had yeah. some other movies too. He did yeah. Life Force. Yeah, yeah, of course. Life Force. <laughs> Life, Force Life Force was the first thing. Apparently, they were looking to try to get him off after Life Force. And yeah. be like, hey, yeah, come on. on to, did Dan O'Bannon work on Life Force? I think he did. Yeah. I think he was working with him on Life Force yeah. from what I was reading. Yeah. Life Force. Check Life Force out. That shit's <laughs> awesome. Oh, Vampires in space, dude. <laughs> so good. Before, well, let me ask you this. What did you think of the uh, mark? The mark? The Yeah, one to five marks. What do you you think? get a good, solid, I'm in a good mood, 4.5. There we go. That's actually a really cool one. Because okay. I love Alien. I love this movie. I love the work H.R. Geiger did. And yes, he is a freak. Yes. <laughs> All due respect. Now, before we move on, Nick, there are some sequels. You want to talk about those? I haven't seen them. You haven't seen them. Uh, I've seen all of them. They are not as good as this. I just want to let you know. It's I hear they're worth checking out. They are worth. I mean, Return of the Living Dead 2 is a lot of fun. Uh, I, I, I like that one. That's like if the shit comes in like a residential neighborhood. OK. Yeah, yeah. There's all that. And there's like a bully character that gets sprayed with the toxic stuff because it's like drums that are like under an overpass they find. There's like this small kid and he's being bullied. And the kid and the guy that's bullying him like gets hit by the toxic thing and turns into like obviously like the zombie uh -oh. and it's all this stuff it's so funny i gotta check them out yeah yeah it's worth checking out is and three any good it's all right <laughs> it's again all right. it's all right that's like the night it's like the 90s now i think okay. return of the living dead 2 is either 89 or 91 i don't know it feels like a 90s movie <laughs> okay but you know, return of the living dead 3 i think is late 90s if i can't remember right if i'm wrong just let me know i mean like i, I don't and then there was like return of the living dead 4 necropolis oh yeah that was when they were that, that that's kind of like the same vein as like what day of the dead bloodline yeah, or something yeah. where they're like hey let's make a sequel let's make a 2000 sequel to this movie mm -hmm. but it's like completely pales in comparison i'm assuming yep we need a direct sequel to return of the living dead one again do and we then yeah, yeah i'd say just like retcon every requel everything and then you know <laughs> just go straight from like dude do, do like the hollow david thing. gordon green that shit <laughs> yep <laughs> stick that stick that shit in there and just like nope this is a new timeline i think that would be pretty cool evil dies tonight evil evil <laughs> pumpkin pies tonight <laughs> Uh, the night before Thanksgiving. Pumpkin pies tonight! <laughs> uh, evil dies tonight. You want to know what this movie's name in German is? Verdammt, the zombies kommen. Oh shit, the zombies are coming? Damn it, the zombies are coming. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 
uh, and the Danish title is Le Gène Er Le Jade, which translates to the dead don't care. <laughs> they really don't. They yes. really don't give a shit. <laughs> Send more cops. Send more cops. <laughs> Why don't you go first and rate this? Right? Okay. Yeah, give, give your spiel. What I got to say about this movie is that the, the pacing is great. The, per, the performances are superb. The gore is outstanding. Uh, I, I, the script is dynamite. Mm. And, and the effects, they're sensational. They really are, like, especially with what Lanai Quigley turns into later. <laughs> yeah. And what comes out of that drum. This is a bullseye. I, I really do. You really did, like, make me fall for this movie. I'll give it this. Uh, this gets a 93. Absolutely. <laughs> Personally, man, this this is so much fun. This is, like, one of my top favorite movies of all time. Like, this is easily in my top 10. 95. 95. All right. You, this, this one's very near and dear to you. But even just because you didn't grow up with something, it doesn't mean you can't fall for it as an adult, you know, later in life. Oh, no, absolutely. I mean, I found it again. You can always it, come up. You can always have new favorites. Found it when I was like 15, 16. And it only just happened through like a 10 second clip at the end of a game cut scene. <laughs> 94. Very nice. 94. Very well for deserved. Return of the Living Dead. Absolutely. Ranks very high. We love this one. Absolutely can't wait. Watch this if you can, please. I love it so much. Maybe I brought a poster. I forgot to show this earlier. Look at that. Oh, look at that beauty. Oh, oh that's a lot of glare on that. that. <laughs> look at that. They're back from the grave and ready to party. And I also want to introduce a new bit for our podcast. And we're going to have this now whenever we remember for time. There's a line in the movie that Nick and I will say to each other now. <laughs> what, because because here's the thing. Basically... Ernie says it to Bert when things have been getting worse for a while and now another step has been taken and he says, Bert, I think things are, are getting out of hand here. He says it very calmly. Very too, calmly. Like that. Very calmly. So we would like to introduce from here on out the I think things are getting out of hand here award. <laughs> the rule is we have to give it to the movie when things have already clearly gotten out of hand way earlier. Yeah, the joke, when you say it, after things have been getting out of hand. This is really closing the door after the barn door after the cows left. And that, that like, <laughs> like they've been gone for like 15 minutes and like got them. We would like to go ahead and award this part when it's said in this movie in future movies. We'll be sure to pull it up and, and say it whenever we yes, yes, remember we is happens when the all of the, the zombies are coming out of the ground. And this is when Spider tells them it's dead people screaming. It's dead people <laughs> screaming. I'll probably put the clip up. <laughs> oh, shit! Shit! And I, God damn! I, I, I think I, I think things are getting out of hand. There's some scenes in this that are that well, Nazi zombies were heavily inspired by because yeah. you gotta board. What do you gotta do in those games? You gotta, you gotta board, board up the, the windows. windows. <laughs> <laughs> Dumb. Dumb. They're pulling the fucking windows <laughs> off again. <laughs> oh God. Okay. <laughs> Well, we're going to bring one back. Um, welcome to the Will I Let Nick in the Club bit. This is a punk club now where the cramps are playing. And uh, I'm a bouncer outside the club, hypothetical, and I'm only going to let Nick in if he names a movie or genre close to something I love based on the question. Name me a point in a different movie in the vein of our new award <laughs> where things are so clearly over, have gotten out of hand, but yet everyone's pretending like everything is OK. I'll, I'll do you one. OK, I'll do you one. Hans detonates the roof yeah. at the end of Die Hard, <laughs> blows up the FBI guys in the helicopter, yeah. spoilers, and it's where, and it'll be where Deputy Chief Dwayne Robinson looks at, uh, looks at Al Powell and goes, I think things are getting out of hand here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll let you in for that one. Come on into the, come on into the club. All right. That will do it for us on the One and a Half White Guys podcast. Be sure to rate us, follow us, and subscribe to us wherever you get your podcast from. And don't forget to follow <laughs> us on our Instagram at One and a Half White Guys Podcast, on TikTok at One and a Half White Guys Pod, and now on our YouTube at One and a Half White Guys. And do be sure to tell a friend to listen to the podcast where we say we're going to talk about a movie and we kind of talk about that movie. If we want to check out another show we're doing, uh, you can check us over on the Nerd Doozies channel under the Weird, the Bad, and the Bloody, where we talk about. Movies that are weird, weird bad, bad, or and bloody. bloody from the decades of the 80s, 90s, and 2000s exclusively on the Nerd Thusiest YouTube channel. You want to go hang out in a graveyard? I just want to party. Oh, you just want to party? Oh, let's do that. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>